The year is 629 AD. You're a Buddhist monk traveling through a vast desert, having set out on an arduous holy mission. Your feet are sore, your mouth is dry, the sun beats down on you without pity, but you take solace in one inescapable fact. When your hardships are at an end, your travels will be the stuff of a legend, inspiring not only Buddhist scholars for generations to come, but also one of the world's most popular anime series and the breakout video game hit of 2024. Okay, that probably wasn't going through the mind of Shenzong, who set out on his historic westward journey to India nearly 1400 years ago. But history moves in mysterious and unexpected ways, one thing leading to another, and to another, and to another, until the original story is all but lost, and all that remains are the myths and legends that surround and overtake the real event. If you've watched Dragon Ball Z or played Black Myth Wukong, you might have no idea that they're based, however loosely, on the adventures of an extraordinary monk from the 7th century. Today, we're going to dive deep into that man's life and the amazing tales that his journey has inspired. To answer the question of how a Buddhist monk's spiritual journey led to, well, this, I'm going to start in modern times and work backwards. In 1978, a new series appeared on Japanese TV. Titled Sayuki, its main character, Son Goku, was a monkey who was hatched from an egg and had been cast down from heaven after eating sacred peaches that made him immortal. Imprisoned under a mountain for 500 years, Son Goku, known simply as Monkey in the English dub, is released by a monk who is making a journey westward from China to India. Along the way, they recruit several other cast-offs, including a water dragon and a lazy, lecherous pig monster. The trio contends with a wide range of enemies, both real and supernatural, including the Chinese Emperor Taizong. The series was dubbed into English and given the title Monkey, after its rambunctious main character. It ran for 52 episodes and had a killer theme song. Prior to that, Monkey, A Folk Tale of China, was written in 1942 by Englishman Arthur Whaley, who is best known for translating works from China and Japan into English. His book used the Chinese name for monkey, Sun Wukong. Along with the water dragon Sandy and pig monster Pigsy, they traveled to India at the behest of the Buddha to retrieve sacred scriptures. Also, there was nearly an animated feature film based on the same stories in the mid-80s, but the company that made the deal to produce it decided that the technology for computer-generated animation wasn't quite up to par yet. That company was called Pixar, and I'd say they eventually figured out CG animation. To locate Whaley's and Sayuki's source material, we have to go back to 1592. That's when Wu Chang'an published Journey to the West, or at least compiled it from popular folk stories circulating in his time. Wu wasn't the first to write down the story, or parts of it, but his version has become one of the classics of Chinese literature, alongside Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which has had several games based on it, and Water Margin, which is where the Suikoden series draws its inspiration from. Journey to the West tells of a fantastical voyage that bears all the hallmarks of the works we've discussed so far, and introduces several of the characters who would go on to achieve legendary status in later adaptations. The most notable of these is the Monkey King, Sun Wukong, whose name means Monkey Awakened to Emptiness, and who, as seen on TV, is hatched from a stone egg. Even as a young monkey, he's able to walk and speak, and beams shoot from his eyes, piercing the clouds. He joins the company of other monkeys, and one day, the group decides that, if one of them is brave enough to leap through a waterfall and find the source of the stream it comes from, and he will be declared king. Sun Wukong achieves this feat and, as the Monkey King, amasses great power and several iconic artifacts, such as a gold chainmail shirt, cloud walking boots, and a staff that he can transform into a pin that he keeps in his ear. That weighs about 9 tons. His other powers include shapeshifting and hairs that he can transform into copies of himself, as well as being able to manipulate the elements. Sun Wukong's strength is matched by his cunning, to the point that he even tricks the Chinese god of the dead, Yan Wang, into removing both his name and the names of every monkey he knows from the Book of Life and Death. At this point, the Heavenly Jade Emperor intervenes and decides to grant Sun Wukong one of the lowest positions in heaven to attempt to rein him in. But he eats sacred peaches and becomes immortal, causes all sorts of other havoc, and is imprisoned under a mountain. 500 years later, he's found and freed by a Buddhist monk traveling to India. The only way the monk can control the chaotic monkey is through a magical headband which he can tighten by reciting a mantra. Sun Wukong serves faithfully as the monk's bodyguard, enduring great hardships and fighting many fierce battles against demons and other monsters. In the end, he achieves enlightenment and ascends to Buddhahood. 
But what about that humble monk who the Monkey King accompanies on his travels? Unlike Journey to the West talking monkeys, gods, demons, and dragons, he was actually real. Shen Yi was born April 6, 602 in the Hainan province of China. He followed in his older brother's footsteps and was ordained as a Buddhist monk in 622, taking the name Shenzong. As a side note, I haven't referred to the name of the monk in the story so far, because it varies based on the tale and the language it was told in, and I probably would have butchered most of them. As a monk, Shenzong was dissatisfied with the many contradictions in the Chinese translations of Buddhist texts, so he took it upon himself to go direct to the source of Buddhism, India. His journey was in danger right from the start. The Emperor of China, Taizong, forbade anyone from leaving the country. Shenzong was denied permission to go, but left anyway, risking arrest and execution if he was discovered. He got lost in the Gobi Desert for five days and struggled to find food or water until his horse miraculously led him to a spring, saving his life. He traveled along the Silk Road, north of the vast Taklamakan Desert, becoming something of a celebrity in the city's long its trade routes and receiving more welcomes from foreign rulers. After surviving the desert heat, he had to contend with the snow and ice of the Himalayan mountains, as well as bandits and other ruffians. He probably could have used a strong monkey king to protect him along the way. He survived all that and crossed over into India, which comprised several independent states in the 7th century. 70 kingdoms, according to Shenzong. He spent over a decade crisscrossing the Indian subcontinent, visiting countless Buddhist holy sites and temples, and journeying as far south as the island of Sri Lanka. On his return trip, he traveled south of the Taklamakan, returning to the city of Chang'an in 645, 16 years after he had left. Despite the emperor's earlier ban on travel, he was praised for his amazing journey, both by the common people and the emperor himself, who offered Shenzong a post in the government. He declined, politely of course, and spent the rest of his life translating the Buddhist scriptures he had brought back from India, as well as comprising some original works, most notably his records of the western regions, which detail his journey and the people and places he visited. All in all, Shenzong is estimated to have traveled about 10,000 miles, which comes out to an average of 1.7 miles per day, every day, for 16 years. The later adaptations of Shenzong's travels imbue them with plenty of supernatural elements, like the Monkey King and various monsters, but even the monk himself made a few unusual claims. These include water dragons who mate with horses to create hybrid dragon horses, and he also claimed to have met a man who was 700 years old. As is often the case with history to fantasy adaptations, even his more realistic encounters were embellished to introduce magical elements. Shenzong was once captured by pirates whose tradition was to sacrifice a handsome man to their goddess every autumn. In Journey to the West, the handsome monk is attacked by female demons who want to marry him, a part of the tale likely inspired by his real-life encounter with the pirates and their goddess. One way in which the later stories differ greatly from the historical account is in their depiction of the monk himself. The real Shenzong was strong, intelligent, and capable. He'd have to be to make the kind of journey he did. But the adaptations tend to make him, or sometimes her, weak and in need of protection, which he or she receives in the form of heavenly bodyguards, most notably the Monkey King. Researcher Cao Shibong believes that many of Shenzong's positive characteristics were instead transferred to Sun Wukong, making him a more dynamic persona, though even his origins might partially lie in India rather than China. In the Indian epic poem Ramayana, Prince Rama is aided in his battle against the demon king by Hanuman, a white monkey with powers very similar to Sun Wukong's in Journey to the West. It's possible that stories of this magical monkey filtered to China, and Wu Chang'an adapted them for his heroic character. Sun Wukong's birth from a stone and long imprisonment also mirrors the legend of an Indian cowherd who swallowed a forbidden fruit and was turned to stone and trapped inside a cave, which the real Shansong visited. Finally, there's a story of General Che Feng Chao. He became a monk after recovering from an illness and, in 789, pleased the emperor so much that he was granted another name, Wukong. Having never formally left military service, he was granted the promotion to Grand General and given a security role. The fictional Monkey King was also promoted by the Buddha because he served as the monk's security detail on his travels. Kao Shibon believes this to be evidence that the legendary character was himself based in part on the general turned monk. I wonder if he had that impressive facial hair. The tale of Shenzong and his journey to the West still resonate today, albeit in sometimes greatly modified form. Even if you strip away all the fantasy elements, his real life journey was the stuff of legend, so it's no wonder that later authors would try to impart some awe-inspiring details to make his trip even more legendary. He was a humble man, so he'd be a little mystified, and maybe even repulsed, 
by the often violent forms his legacy has taken today. As for Sun Wukong, he would love being an action hero, so maybe it was out of some measure of reverence for the monk that he supplanted Shenzong as the de facto main character of later stories, and has become the iconic figure he is today. He'll probably stay that way for a long time. Over 9,000 years, if I had to put a number to it. Thank you so much for watching this video about the origins of the Monkey King and the monk whose travels inspired this legendary figure. Feel free to leave a comment to tell me what you thought of it, and like and subscribe if you want to see more videos about the true history of fantasy. Until next time, may no one ever make a monkey out of you.